Uh, hello. Uh, I'm going to talk about LibratBug, which is a daemon to configure uh, input devices. So, who am I? My name is Philip Lynch. I like beer. I'm a student. I'm one of the maintainers of LibratBug, and I package some stuff for Arch Linux. Um, so, the table of content, of content, content, I'm going to explain a bit better what is LibratBug. Then I'm going to talk about the, the current the, the current status, what we have planned for for the future, and the, a really really quick overview of the it protocol. Then how you can define your own uh, LibratPak driver. Then some questions. So what is LibratPak? LibratPak is a debus demand a demand to configure the hardware of input devices. So for example. Some IAM devices like this one, you can change the sensibility and other aspects of the hardware. Uh, but they often, the, the manufacturer often only uh, provides uh, official drivers for like Windows and sometimes maybe Mac, but never Linux really. So if you buy such, uh, an expensive mice like this one, you you want to, to be able to change the, those settings, and that's what LibratBug allows you to do. We are, we are vendor agnostic, so we uh, our API is not tied to any particular vendor. So you can define your own driver for your for, for any mouse or any other kind of input device, and uh, and have it work. So. We, Right now, we mainly support Logitech because they actually use a, a standard protocol between all of their devices. So it's really easy to um, n not necessarily maintain, but to uh, to have the, the same code work for different models. While other uh, uh, other vendors like SteelSeries. Uh, have like a different protocol for each uh, hardware, so it's a bit of a mess. Uh, and LibratPak was created in 2015 by Benjamin Tiswach, which uh, who is uh, w one of the maintainers of the the ID subtree of the kernel, and uh, Peter Atterer, which is uh, the, who is the maintainer of libinput and uh, mo the most of the Linux input stack. So what can you configure with LibratBac? So you can change the, the resolutions, so the DPI settings. You can change the report rate. You can remap buttons. You can uh, do hardware macros. And you can change the effects of, of the LEDs. So uh, for clients, we currently have RATPAC CTL, which is still uh, SLA client. Uh, which is CLI client, uh, uh, but it's mostly intended for debug. And we have Piper, which is a, a GTK client, which is mainly uh, which is intended to be like a, a proper client for end users. So, the status of LibratMac, so it works. You can change all of settings for for the supported devices, uh, but we don't have any uh, we don't have a stable client api yet so because of several issues like uh, we have limited time we are not uh, we don't want to define a stable api yet because we we will have to if we do it we will have to maintain it and we want we hope to to be able to do it soon but uh, it's not uh, there yet. So the issues that we co currently have with LibratPak, like I said, we have limited time. Uh, we don't have that many maintainers uh, or that many contributors. Most uh, the the, uh, the people that contribute to LibratPak mostly uh, make their device work and don't really uh, 
contribute to, to the rest of the code, so you can have uh, some part of uh, the, the code for some device that works uh, perf perfectly fine, but uh, for other hardware, it can be a little bit buggy because uh, because w the the people that contribute to that code uh, are not that that uh, active. So it's uh, one of the issues is can be hard to maintain. So some the, some of the code, if you if you don't have some previous knowledge of the it um, protocol, which is the protocol used by uh, uh, by input devices, it can be a, a little bit complex in, in some parts, but you usually don't have to deal with it. We, uh, we, me and the other maintainers have to deal with it. And uh, I think the, the most important thing is that we have lim uh, limited access to hardware. So I don't, do not own all of the hardware that we support and uh, neither do the other maintainers. We have, between all of us, I think we have a, a, a good portion of the hardware, but we don't have all of it. And that can uh, really, uh, uh, that, that can really prevent us from fixing stuff because we don't have the hardware. Um, so, about the, the, the future, we want to set up a, a CI, but to, to, to test the hardware drivers, real, because they communi communicate with hardware, we, we need, the only way for us to, to, to test them is to actually emulate the hardware. Otherwise, we don't have in any way to, we will have to have like a physical CI, which is, which is not great because like I said, we don't have all of the devices and it's hard to maintain. So w what we want to do is to have a uh, device simulation. So this summer, uh, Logitech was kind enough to uh, give me an internship where uh, during the summer I uh, worked on open source software and one of the most, uh, one of the, the principal, the, the, the main, uh, the projects of the internship was to uh, to create a device simulator. So we right now right now we have a device simulator that works. We have a prototype, and we have a, a prototype CI for the bad bug, but it's a, only a prototype. I'm I am rewriting the uh, device simulator. It should be ready soon. So hopefully soon we will have like a proper CI that. Can, uh, can emulate the, all of the hardware even if we don't have it and can actually make proper uh, regression testing, make sure that uh, new changes don't break uh, existing code and things like that. One other uh, thing I wanted to, to, to play around with is color synchronization. So for example, if you have uh, a device uh, 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 like a mouse and a keyboard, you could actually have the the the, the light effects sync up between them. Or if you have like other kind of devices that we could support, you you could uh, have everything nice and synced up. You have the, the same color effects between everything. So I'm going to talk just a little bit about the it protocol, which is the protocol used by input devices. This is supposed to be like just an entry point for for people that want to understand how these input devices interact with the with the uh, computer and how they operate and on, uh, on top of that uh, on, on top of that how the 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 protocol for. Uh, uh, how the protocol f to configure th these devices uh, relates to that. So, uh, so you have a, a device. The, this is uh, the, the, uh, one of the most common examples. Is for example, you have a mouse. And every time the hardware changes, uh, the, the hardware state changes, you send a report to the, the, to the uh, host 
telling. Okay, so I moved uh, x uh, dot in the x axis. So, uh, but the 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 it protocol is is designed to to work with uh, all kinds of input devices, and they have different hardware pro properties. So we can cannot have like a standardized uh, uh, rep uh, report structure. So the, the, the packet that the device sends to the computer to tell it uh, what changed in the uh, uh, sorry to tell it what changed. It cannot be standardized. Otherwise, we will have like a really really big packet because we need to send everything that is possible. So. To prevent this, uh, the ETH protocol defined report descriptors, which are basically st structures that um, describe how the, 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 the packet is, is structured. So for example, in this simple uh, example, you have a mouse, uh, a mouse and every time the, the uh, hardware site changes, it will send three bytes to the uh, host updating the the state of the button. For example, in this case, the 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 the, the button's byte is just a bit masked. Every bit represents one button, and then you have uh, you have your two axes. Um, but to uh, but the 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 it protocol can cannot really. We, it's not broad enough to, to be able to define all of the uh, the things that you could be able to configure in your device. For example, the sensibility or some other crazy things that the vendors might want to do. So they defined, um, uh, th th so they allow it uh, allow you to define uh, a certain part of the packet as uh, just vendor data. So uh, in, in a more complex event, you, you could uh, have a report descriptor that says that the, the uh, packets that start with one send the, uh, the, the basic mouse uh, hardware updates, and the, the, the reports that start with two just send vendor data. And at this point, the, the E driver, the generic E driver, will just ignore the, this data. It knows what to do with, with that one, but it will ignore the vendor data. And then you can have like a vendor driver to to deal with that rate, with that data. And uh, that is what Libra Pack does. We interact with the, the, the vendor data. So uh, every, uh, every vendor will uh, have a, a, a protocol inside this vendor data, a, a way for us to configure the devices and talk with the devices using the, this vendor data. Um, in, uh, in, Linux, in Linux, you have two ways to interact with the vendor data. You can have like a kernel driver, but that's not really a great uh, solution. Uh, you really only want to do it if you need to, uh, if you need access to, the, to, to that data some, somewhere inside the kernel. The, the most common uh, example is uh, the battery reporting. So you can have the, the, the battery reporting show, uh, show up in CSFS and then have your power pick it up and report it natively. Uh, and for that, you, you could do a kernel driver. But for all of the other things, like configure the LEDs and, and things like that, you don't really want to do a kernel driver. You uh, you want to, you can do it in a user space, so uh, the kernel will uh, export a dev e draw uh, device, uh, which are, which is a device that just sends the the, the, the raw data to the uh, which is a, a file descriptor that only send, uh, that sends the, the the raw data to the device. So in in Libra Pack, to write your own driver, you basically create a new file and you define some functions, and then you define this this, this uh, structure. Uh, 
the 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 structure can, can the, the structure can vary uh, a bit, but for um, most cases you you want to define a, a probe method, which is uh, uh, every time the the you update something some setting, it will be called. Uh, uh, so, sorry, no. Uh, the, the probe method is the the first time that you connect a the device. Then you have a remove me uh, method that is when you remove the device. Then you have the, the commit method that is every time you update some setting, it will call that method. And usually, what you do is just to take that uh, to, to send to, to tell the device to be, con be configured in that way. Um, so I, I I can if anyone has questions, I can answer. Otherwise, I can show you a demo. I mean, I don't know if you know. Uh, the, okay, the, the status of programming the, the memory of the uh, some devices. So, most of the, the most devices don't really allow you to interact with with that because they just the firmware only. Uh, uh, the thing is that sorry. So, you have the the, the device that is connected by uh, via USB or something. And you have the it protocol on, to, on top of it. It, do, it, it doesn't. Uh, most of us don't really have a way for you to, uh, to 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 interact with the memory. For example, Logitech devices, the Logitech devices, particularly with uh, onboard profiles, actually export like uh, um, emulated memory, where you you can store stuff. It, it is used to store uh, like uh, macros. Uh, in more recent uh, uh, devices, like uh, some uh, custom LED effects, you you can uh, in those devices you can actually using the, the vendor protocol you can write to that to some part of the memory, and you you can uh, do other uh, do some stuff with that. But most devices don't really allow you to interact with the met uh, with the memory. It's basically you just. Uh, most of us only have like really simple commands that you say, okay, uh, set the the LED to the color red, and then and th then the the the, the, the farmer receives that message that message and interprets it and does uh, does that that sets the the LED to red. I don't know if I answered your question properly. Because it just most of us don't really uh, allow you. No, there's no interface to to write di directly to the memory, because it, after all, this is just an MCU running running some firmware that uh, will just get the updates from the sensor and then report uh, create some uh, it packets with the with the, the updated state and send it. So it's uh, you you can only do what the firmware allows it to do. I mean, in some devices you can actually open them up and reprogram it, but that's a bit out of the scope. I mean, anyone has? Um, yeah, is the Raspberry only supporting um, HID devices? Like, uh, if I well, I do have a mouse where I reverse engineer the protocol. But it's not, well, it isn't the HID, so should I write a kernel driver to emulate an HID device? Uh, uh, I mean, I don't think you should. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. What you are asking if uh, you are told that you have a mouse that uh, allows you to configure it, but doesn't, but doesn't export an uh, HID device. So, uh, uh, in that case, I don't think you should write a kernel driver. Uh, right now. All of the devices that we support are HID devices, but I don't think that we uh, need to do that necessarily. Uh, I mean, we have to, to talk with the other maintainers, but uh, we might want to have that in Libratback because, after all, it's just just a daemon that takes your device and exports some some settings. So resolutions, import rates, uh, LED effects, things like that. And 
your device matches the that profile. So, anyone has any questions? Um, do you have to use um, ratbag D to get stuff done, or can you just write something that uses lib, uh, lib ratbag to go and configure devices okay. directly via That's HID? Okay, uh, so do, I, do we need to use the ratbag D, which is the daemon? Or can I just uh, use libratback to, to, to do what I want? Um, it's kind of deprecated, and we just merge the, 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 uh, uh, the daemon and the library. And right now we only su uh, public uh, support the daemon because I I, I, I was not in the, uh, involved with the project when that happened, but I think it was because the uh, it was hard to maintain a, a, a public API for the library because it was in constant development, so we didn't they didn't really want to maintain a, a public uh, binary API. Okay. So I think that's uh, what happened, but I'm not entirely sure. So, anyone? Any questions? No. Okay. Uh, I can show you uh, a demo. So I'm going to connect this mouse. I forgot the receiver, but I can connect it directly. Okay, my device shows up. Then I have resolutions. I can change that. Can remap buttons, for example. I think one of the the most important things is, for example, if you are uh, left-handed, so you you want to switch the the two uh, main buttons. Uh, you, if your mouse is supported in the right back, you can just go here, and uh, by default it will just pop you this, uh, uh, this in interface where you can just do it and then uh, it's room up, then you click apply and then and, and now the buttons are, uh, let me see if I can, okay, yeah, I need to do this, the, the, button, the buttons are remapped. Uh, I need to use the other button. Yeah, OK. So uh, then we have the uh, the, uh, the LEDs. So I can just put like this orange. If I do this, now if I let me show, if I click apply, it should go orange. OK, it went. Yeah, that's basically it.